Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. I haven't done a math video in a while and today one of my friends uh, wanted me to go through a question with them. Uh, unfortunately, I, don't, I can't see them face to face. So I will have to make a video for them. But basically their question was, how do you prove a number is irrational? How do you prove a number is irrational? Let's just try square root of three. How do you prove that? So it's actually, the algebra is actually quite simple. You just have to understand a couple of other statements. You don't have to prove them, but you just have to use them in this proof. But basically we're gonna start with the fact that square root of three is rational. Okay, so what the, what are we doing? If we're trying to prove why, or we're trying to prove that it's irrational, why are we saying it's rational? Because we're going to assume that it's rational, and then we're going to prove that this is false. Prove this statement is false. Okay, if we can prove that square root of three is rational is false, then we can say it's irrational because a number is either rational or irrational, right? If it's not rational, it's irrational. So, uh, yeah, so now we just got to assume it, it's rational and we just got to keep going. So if square root of three is rational, that means square root of three is equal. Sorry, I probably don't need the equal sign at the front. That means that square root of three is equal to A over B. Okay, so what's A over B mean? A is an integer. A and B are both integers. Okay, they're both integers. They're, so their whole number is 3, 4, or whatever. And A and B have no common factors. No common factors. Right, if square root of three is rational, you should be able to write it as a fraction where one integer divided by another integer and they don't have a common factor. So for example, e.g. two over five is rational. Two and five, they don't have common factors, but it's a, it's a rational number. So we're saying square root of three can be rewritten as a divided by b. Okay, so then we're going to do some algebra on this. We're now going to square both sides. So we're going to go square root of 3 squared equals a over b squared. Square both sides. So what do we do after that? Okay, well we just simplify it. So square root of 3 squared is 3. And then we have a squared over b squared. So how does that help us? Okay, how does that help us? I'm going to rewrite that as a squared equals 3b squared. Okay, I'm simply moving the b squared from the bottom to the top on the other side. And I'm just switching the equal signs over. Just in case you can't see that, I'll do it the long way. a squared equals 3b squared because it goes to the top. And then I'm writing a squared equals 3b squared like that. Okay, so a squared equals 3b squared. Uh, so what? Now you need to use another statement. If a squared is divisible, is divisible by 3, then a is divisible by 3. Okay. Now this is not always true for any divisor. This will only work when the divisor, the number three, is a prime number. Prime number has to be prime for this to work. Now this is another proof that you got to Google. 
Uh, but in order to do this proof, you can just say that. You can just say this out in a statement on the exam. If a squared is divisible by 3, then a is divisible by 3. Because you can't keep proving things forever. So this statement, you're just going to have accept, have to accept in this proof that this is also true. All right. And if you want to prove this, then you got to write out another proof. But if a squared is divisible by 3, then a is divisible by 3. Only works when this number here is prime. So how do we know a squared is divisible by 3? Because the number 3 is here. 3 times the number is equal to a squared, which means 3 is a factor of a squared, which means a squared is divisible by 3. Okay, so now we have a is divisible by 3. Now using this second statement, Using this second statement, I can then write a is equal to 3 times a number. All right, so I've made up another number, another variable here called r, which you are allowed to do in algebra. You can just make things up. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't say that. You can just make up another variable and do stuff with that variable as long as it makes sense. So when you say a is div divisible by 3, I can say a equals 3 times r to represent that second statement. So if it's divisible by 3, I'm now going to work on this bit here and say a squared is equal to 3r squared, which means a squared is equal to 9r squared, All right, just by squaring both sides. So now I have a squared equal to two things. a squared is equal to 3b squared here, and it's equal to 9r squared here. So a squared is equal to two things. So now that means these two things must be equal. So 3b squared must be equal to 9r squared, because they're both equal to a squared. So these two things must be equal to each other. So if I want to uh, simplify that, okay, if I want to make b the subject now, I can say b squared is equal to 9r squared divided by 3. I move the 3 to the other side. So now b squared is equal to 3r squared. All right, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Okay, so what have we done? We noticed something else. If b squared is, divis is divisible by 3, then b is divisible by 3 using the same concept All right we have square of a variable is divisible by a prime number then the square root of that so b is divisible by the same prime number so this is a, another rule you've got to sort of look up on google if you want to see the proof Okay, so what? So we got a and b both divisible by 3. So what's next? a is divisible by 3. b is divisible by 3. So we can now say a and b are both divisible by 3. Which means a and b have 3 as a common factor, all right? Because that's what divisible by 3 means. In order for it to be divisible by 3, 3 is a factor. And if 3 is a factor of both A and B, then, three, then, then A and B have a common factor of 3. Now, look how this contra contradicts what we had at the start. We said at the start, A and B have no common factor. And now we've just proven that they have a common factor. So now you're just going to say, this means uh, so actually, let me just say that another way. This contradicts the original assumption. that a and b have no common factor have no common factor 
right? So we just found that they have common factor of three. We originally said they have no common factor. So therefore we can say that uh, square root of two, oh sorry, square root of three, not two. Square root of three is not rational. Okay, square root of three is irrational. Okay, use the therefore sign just in case your teacher wants that. Okay, so we originally said this statement, they have no common factor. We've just proven that it's false. We've proven that it's false, so now it means that the opposite is true. They Square root of three is rational. All right, well, there's my uh, take on this. Hopefully this helps you. You can now use this same uh, working out to prove that the square root of any prime number is irrational. So you can repeat this problem. Prove square root of um, five is irrational. Okay, you can do this. Oops. You can do the same thing. Square root of two, square root of seven. You can do the same working out. So hopefully it's just memorizing this. Write it out on the test. All right, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.